Hi everybody, I am doing some construction here in my cave this afternoon. And what I am building is uh, Eagle Moss's multi-part kit of the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. And just to give you an idea about how big this thing is, this is a kit that you order, you pay, I don't know, 40 bucks a month for 24 months. You pay a lot over time, but it's like a subscription kit. And each month you get some parts. And when you're all done, you end up with an Ecto-1 that's like this big. Seriously, that's actual size. And holy hell, uh, it is a beautiful, crazy detailed model. Um, I am currently working on the engine and I'm playing around with some painting techniques to make the engine look right. Uh, I am weathering as I go. This is something I learned when I did the subscription kit of the Millennium Falcon is if you don't weather as you go, the job you have at the end is way too big <laughs> to do all at once. Yeah, um, I have regrets. So in order not to have regrets about my Ecto-1, I am weathering during assembly. And I'm doing a basic weathering. Like right now I'm doing the engine, it's multiple parts and pieces. When I'm done with the engine, well, let's see. I am weathering some basic passes of the components as they go together so I have some interesting part separation. And then as I'm also going, I'm playing around with other washes and rusts to kind of tie it together and make the details pop. In the end, I want it to feel like the old engine of a uh, Miller Meteor uh, Ecto-1 ambulance. I don't want it to look like a brand new out of the box machine. I want it to look like a beat up old piece of kit that was well loved. So that's what I'm building. Um, I am currently on stage eight, which is the other half of the engine. So here you can see the engine that I have built so far. I'm kind of happy with how the uh, the head gas the head cover head gasket cover looks. Um, there's the transmission now. This isn't a final paint job, but you can see that I've done some separation between the bell housing and the, et cetera, the other parts. Um, I will continue to call out little bits and pieces as I see them, just to make things pop. Ultimately, I want this to feel like I'm holding on to a real V12 engine. Um, so let's start with stage eight. We start with this part. Now I'm doing a basic grime pass on everything using Floquil's grime color. Um, I'm not doing the same density of grime pass, but if you've ever looked underneath your car, you've seen how, how crappy it can look. Um, so I'm doing that kind of crappy, the underside of an uncared for vehicle. So here we have uh, a piece that a head gasket goes onto. This is the right side of the engine. I am basically just gonna do a kind of a, a, a wash. I'm gonna get a little bit of lacquer thinner on there. So I can do a sort of a wash of grime and I'm not being precious about it. I'm just giving it a full all over like this. Okay, there you go. That's kind of what that looks like. And then I'm gonna take a lot of that off. I'm gonna dab it. No, not that dab. I'm gonna dab it and sort of wipe it until it feels like a thing. Then I'm using a rub and buff with a toothbrush, which is a great way to kind of do a dry brush. So take a look at this. You'll see, I'm gonna do this kind of, yeah, and what the rub and buff does is it kicks the high spots. It kicks the high spots and makes them shine a little metallic. And that's the kind of extra detailing I want. I'm not gonna be, again, super precious about it. I'm just gonna sort of try to get some separation in there. And then the last thing I'm doing is a little bit of a black oil wash. So getting a nice wet brush with some black oil paint. And I'm gonna get that in here, like there. And then I'm using a big old bushy brush to kind of move that around. And if you look, you'll see now it feels a lot more like an old bit of old bit of car engine mechanics. So um, I want to get some rub and buff all over this cylinder head because I'm figuring that they were replaced at some point. So uh, I can do that with a little bit of lacquer thinner on the rub and buff and actually paint it on. 
Um, you can actually, yeah, you can lay down rub and buff and a fairly nice dense coat this way, a little bit of lacquer thinner. And I'm gonna do that. And I think I might even break out my blow dryer just to get this one setting quicker. And the lacquer thinner flashes very fast. I mean, that's one of the things that's great about lacquer thinner is it flashes quickly. Flashes means it evaporates into the air and lets its paint dry quickly. So here is my rub and buff cylinder head. In a minute, I will, um, I will actually, it's, yeah, that's the great thing about rub and buff too, is it sets really quickly. So, and then we'll get a little, do a little, yeah, oh, that's great. And then let's get some more terpenoid on there and do some more black into the corners. And a big bushy wash around, yes. And, you know, in the real world, anytime there's a corner, it's usually not cleaned very well into that corner. So that's the kind of real world uh, weathering you want to see. And again, I can go back with the rub and buff and get a little more metallic look on it if I want. I can get a little more oil on there. The other thing is to not over localize your grime. Um, you have too much grime in one place or it's too even, that's definitely gonna like stand out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you wanna wipe away a lot of your grime, sometimes not a lot. Okay, that feels pretty good. Nice. Um, a lot of these screws seem to me to be not pre-threaded, but actually just sort of the, the screwing of the screw creates its own threads. So just note that I'm not sure this kit is one that can be repeatedly taken apart with abandon. You gotta be a little bit kind of careful about that. Oh, nice, this is gonna be great. And so then this connects up to this, oh, look at that, gorgeous. Oh, okay, come on, come on. You can get going. That's it, that was a nice click, that's what I wanted to hear. And those are DM screws, DM. Yeah, those are longer. One and two, we put one DM in there, and we put one DM in there, and put it all the way down. So now I've got this terrific, I've got this terrific whole engine block, and you can see there's some parts that aren't fully weathered, so I'm gonna get some grime in here and I'm gonna do some sort of touching up, try and make this thing feel a little more contiguous. So let's get some grime in there. And again, each time you feel like you're not seeing all the detail that you wanna see, go ahead and hit that place you think you should see more detail, hit it with another color. You know, add some black behind it. Uh, it's it's a process, not a there's not a technique to learn. It's more like a process to get used to. Um, yeah, I like those screws being popped out. These uh, these head gasket covers are terrific, um, and I could keep on covering these with silver and keep on buffing them down because that just keeps on telling the story that they have been beat up over the years. This is starting to look like a, a nice engine there. All right, so now let's get some black going. Uh, my black brush, where'd that go? Here it is. Okay. And I'm using this big bushy brush to kind of move around the black. But, but it's very subtle. So I go in with a little black 
and then I hit it with the brush. And I go in with the, with the black, and then I hit it with a brush. And it's just a process of like, does it look good? Does it still look good? All right, keep on going. Did that not work? All right, go back with some silver and uh, hit it again. Um, in each case, I'm kind of like trying to remove any uniformity that I see, any artifacts that make it look like it was painted by a person. And again, grime in the corners. There's always grime in the corners. Later on, once I, so these are all still first passes of weathering. Um, later on, I will come in here with some rust and some grease looking kind of paints to, to tie it together. But for right now, I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah, see, I go back and dry brush the rub and buff on top of the grime, and I think you can see just how neatly varied that starts to look. Now, the ignition coil cap, and that's this guy. And for this guy, I am gonna just hit it with more of my rub and buff, just to make it look a little more cool. Um, every time I'm weathering something, every time, including this one, every time I'm weathering something, there's a point at which I'm like, I'm an idiot. This isn't working. It's just, it never, ever fails. Okay, insert, inserting the spark and distributor cap plugs. Holy crap. Locate the spark plugs, 8L. Insert one into each of the four holes in the right cylinder head, just above the right exhaust fan. So these are all, let's see. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, these look like the... This medical tray I've got is really great for some of this stuff because I can put it down here and I know it's not gonna roll off the table. So, uh, push four more spark Pushing the dipstick into the engine block. Okay, so let's see. Let's go one, two, three, four. You know what? I need some needle nose pliers. By the way, here are the tweezers that come with the kit. Um, they're okay, they're okay. Go to your beauty supply store or go onto Amazon and order a pair of Mr. Tweezer Man's Super Razor Sharp tweezers. Take a look at those guys. We will post a link. Um, Mr. Tweezer Man tweezers are objectively the best for your tweezers. All right, I'm gonna use some small needle nose pliers here. Two, four, six, eight. They're all still there. Great. So I'm just gonna press fit that into there. One. Two. There's gonna be a whole spark plug wire part of this, which is gonna be really fun. Okay, those are the all right, I've got some Floquil Scarlet paint here. Look, if this color totally craps the bed and I don't like it, that's fine. Um, however, I am going to, yeah, I need to give this my all. By that, I mean I need to get my all. This, this is my grandfather's all. This is one of the few tools I have that uh, I got from his workshop. So actually that's too, that's too big a poke. Actually, maybe these are the pokes. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, and then uh, let's use my needle nose to put these in here. One, oh, this is great. Okay, so I just used the needle nose pliers to pop a little hole in some foam board. And that basically allows me to use this as a little bit of a painting stand so I can get some color onto these spark plug caps, uh, distributor plug caps. Um, I just wanna add some variance to the engine so that it scales. 
Oh look, they included nine of the spark plug caps, even though you only need eight of them. Am I right about that? Two, four, six, eight. Yes, very nice of them. Okay, Flocal Scarlet, here we come. I am not gonna clean out a brush for this. I'm gonna use the same brush I was using for the grime. I don't really mind if I get a little bit of uh, over color, you know? Uh, so I'm just gonna make each of these a little bit red. Yeah. All right. And I'll take that out of some micro thinner. Oh, and then figure F is, there is a bit of tubing, nice. I can do this while I'm waiting for these to dry. And this tubing goes from, yeah. Oh, there are nine because one is in the center, that's why. All right, so this thread's on there. Damn, that looks gorgeous, look at that. That is some nice work they did. And you know what? I am also going to get a little bit of red on the dipstick tops. Because sometimes they are. Do the same over here. And later on, I'll grime them back down again so they don't stand out so much. But yeah, it helps a little bit. Just to, again, every time you add a little bit of color variance, you're you're just adding a little bit of storytelling. You're just also adding a little bit of visual detail that draws your eye. And when you draw your eye, and it feels like the same kind of, I'm looking to replicate an experience. So when you open the hood of a car and you look inside, you have this experience of what that looks like. I'm looking to replicate that experience. And it's not like you're like, hmm, what part of the car is that? You're just looking at the totality of the thing. And that's what I'm looking for. Again, so it's all a long way of saying, you know, it's not like a specific way to do this. I'm just kind of going through. And I might screw this up. I might consider that these caps all being that color is not gonna work for me, but it might. So. What's nice is, given how they're set up, I can just pick up each one and pop it in there. Uh, yeah, so I want that pointing that way. And okay, then they want me taking this guy, and again, I'm gonna do some dry brushing on that. So here's the before, and there's the after. See that? Just that little bit of dry brushing adds all this great detail. That goes through, and an AP screw holds it from the other side. Doesn't seem to have an alignment pin, so it just holds all this together. And grab an AP. What? What just fell out? Oh, it fell out of my hand. That's what fell out. I will say I have a whole bunch of Weeha screwdrivers here because um, I thought they'd be much better than the one they shipped the kit with. But this little screwdriver, shockingly, it fits all, the, it fits their freaking parts just perfectly. All right, this little guy, I wanna also get some dry brush on there. Okay, so now this is like a good portion of the base of the carburetor. Base of the carburetor there. And I'm going to give it a little bit of some weathering. I'm gonna give it a little bit of turpentine and some black, just to kind of, just to give it a little bit of variance. And then I'm gonna use my big bushy weathering spreader to move it around. And I can even use my, this cloth, to, Pull it off of a bunch of stuff. Yep. Ah, 
And then I can go back with my rub and buff and hit the high spots. And now I've added all this kind of great little detail to this part. I've gotten a lot of detail for not a huge amount of labor. This guy lives, let's see here. He lives right there. Oh, and I don't even have to worry about the alignment because I can see it. Okay, so I wanna get some more dirt underneath that. I think it should be dirtier. And so I'm gonna add some all around the base of the carburetor there. Because I want it to, I want it to pop. And I use my weathering spreader. I'm gonna put this on now. Yeah, it's just a little more poppy. And I'm also gonna get a little more rub and buff going. Mm hmm And I'm gonna hit these high spots again. I want it to be, I want it to be a little even brighter. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Now, when you pop on, yeah, see that? Now that looks really neat. Now that looks like a thing. Now that actually looks like it separates out from the other bits. That's my goal. This is a pretty, pretty, pretty kit. Air filter, yeah, okay, so. Now, uh, take the frame part and this piece and assemble them with an EP screw. Oh, there's only one way. This is really great. <coughs> Here is a part and a piece, and you can try and put them together the wrong way. Oh, I guess you can. Well, oh, it's bilaterally symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. EP screw goes in there. EP, FP, EP, there we go. Uh, in general, they've done a tremendous amount of excellent engineering, idiot-proofing the construction of this model. Um, it's not that everything is super obvious, you know, don't fret if you're finding it a, a little bit of a pain in the butt, but... Now, in my experience, fuel filters are kind of shiny, so I may hit this with a little floor wax later. Um, okay, so that's the bottom. And it sits, oh my gosh, yeah. So see how you like, you lose all that stuff. You lose all that detail. Um, for models like this, I really like the Tamiya uh, lacquers because they set quickly um, and they go on thin and thin equals scale in my experience. Also, they dry fast. So I'm going to make it glossy first, and then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of grime. And then after that, I'll do a little rust to tie the whole thing together. Great. Then O9K pops in, and I'm gonna give that a little dry brush too because we don't want it to feel left out. Ladies and germs. All right, so let's get a little bit of Okay, I think this is looking gorgeous. Gorgeous. Lovely, lovely. All right. Oh man, this thing's starting to get delicate. So that gets the first screw is an EP there. 
Right, and that moves, right? Yeah, so that moves, great. Okay, so an EP there. That's the one I want to do first anyway. Wait, does that not work those? Well, it's not. Oh, it's there. Oh, that's where it goes. Amazing. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the next one is an FM over there. Huh? Oh wait, does that sit on top of it? It does! All right. So then this comes over here. Yes. I was right about which one I wanted to start with. Oh, so much better. Okay, once I get this and the other one tightened, this should be a fairly tight little piece. This is dreamy, uh, doing this work. I'm finding it very highly relaxing. There are times I like designing stuff myself. A lot of the time I like designing stuff myself. And then there are times I just really dig following instructions. Seriously, sometimes it's intoxicating. Okay. Assembling the oil filter. Okay. There we go. There's that guy again. We're going to. A little bit of detail in scale. And there's that cap. Cappy cap. That's just there. Let's grime it. Grime it. Nice. And then on the back side goes the other thing. Is this the last step? Oh my goodness, it might actually be. And a DP, a DP goes there. So we'll get that going. And the oil filter sits. Oh, yep. So that's a BP. And that sits on that part of the oil filter that goes in there. And then this is the one that goes in there. Yes. Oh, baby. And then the next one, or the last one, yeah, DP. Here we go. And then I'm gonna do a bit of rust pass on this just to make it tie it together. Is that a DP? It is a DP, yeah. Oh, oh, no, I don't attach that, wait. A BP there. Oh, but we don't know what, okay, so this is a DP, but I don't use it there. Okay, 
ladies and germs, let's get some, let's get some, uh, some rust on this puppy here. Uh, I want to get some, some burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a little raw umber, and a little bit of the grime. So now I'm just going through and kind of tying it up, sort of bring some pieces together, adding some rust in places I don't think you'll get to see very much later on. I'm just sort of looking for anything that sort of stands out that could use a little more, a little more love. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is a terrific stopping point. And it is the stopping point because that finishes out step number 10 of the Eagle Moss Ecto-1. I will now take my camera and get you some close-ups. <laughs>